All praise to the most high. Tonight's topic is called a good name. Let's hope I'm gonna be moving quite quickly in this class because we started late. Okay, uh, Sarak 44 verse one. Sarak 44 verse one, let's start there. Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse one. Go ahead. Let us now praise famous men and our mm. fathers that beget us. Our fathers that beget us is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. The Lord has wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. So the most High God, he showed great power through them from the beginning. We read about their great and excellent and mighty works that they were, they were approved of the Lord. Jump down to verse 13. 13. Their seed shall remain forever. For how long? Forever. Their seed shall remain forever. We are the seed. That's why we're here this day. Go ahead. And their glory shall not be blotted out. You see that thing? The glory of our forefathers that beget us in verse 1, it says what? It says their glory shall not be blotted out. Okay? Meaning blotted out of this book. Read. Their bodies are buried in peace. Mm -hmm. But their name liveth forevermore. You see that thing? Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name liveth forever. When you say their bodies are buried in peace, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, okay? Ecclesiastes 12, um, right after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, hold on. Uh, okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse seven, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse seven. Go ahead. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Mm -hmm. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Because when the spirit goes back to the Lord, you are, you are in peace. You understand? There's no more captivity. You are, we, you are, in, the, you are in the heavens with the most high. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Job. Okay? Because our forefather Job, Job the third chapter, he spoke about this thing. Okay? Job. Job chapter 3, Job chapter 3 and verse, verse 13. Job 3 verse 13. Job chapter 3 verse 13. Come on. For now should I have lain still and been quiet. Mm -hmm. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. Then had I been at rest. You see what I'm saying? So when you die... Like we read in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Guess what? Your spirit goes to the Lord who gave it, and you are going to be at rest. So go back to Ecclesiastes 44 now. Okay, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 14. Read. Their bodies are buried in peace, mm -hmm. but their name liveth forevermore. You see that thing? But their name liveth forevermore. Their name liveth forevermore. Their name liveth forever because in, even unto this day, we're still talking about our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Nahum, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, Moses, Ezra, so on and so forth. Their names liveth forevermore. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 15. The people will tell of their wisdom. The people will what? The people will tell of their wisdom. Who's the people that will tell of their wisdom? Us, the seed of them. You understand? We are the seed of our fathers. We are the seed of our fathers. We are the people that will tell of our forefathers' wisdom. You understand? Because when we come into this truth, we repent. We learn our history, who we are, our nationality, where we come from, how great we are in the sight of the Most High and inside of these nations, by the way. Now it says the people will what? The people will tell of their wisdom. Even the nations today, they are telling. They are, they are, the movies you see out there, all the movies, the books that have been written. It's about our forefathers. They just won't tell you. You understand? Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 15. Go ahead. The people will tell of their wisdom mm. and the congregation will show forth their praise. And the congregation will show forth their praise. Who's the congregation? Give me that in First Chronicles. Okay. First Chronicles 28. Read that for me. You know what I want, right? Yes, sir. Okay. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 8. Go ahead. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, 
You see that thing? In the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord. Go ahead. And in the audience of our God, mm -hmm. keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God. Read. That, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. You see that thing? So the congregation of the Lord is the 12 tribes of Israel. So let's go back. Sarah 44 verse 15 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 15. Read. The people will tell of their wisdom mm -hmm. and the congregation will show forth their praise. So the people in the congregation is making reference to the same people, which is who? Us, the 12 tribes of Israel, like we read in First Chronicles. Now give me Sirach, give me First Maccabees now, 2 verse 51. First Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 51. This is during the time of our forefathers, Marathias. Okay. And my great and mighty man. Watch this. Read that. First Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 51. Now, what you want to notice is it says the people will tell of their wisdom. So the thing that these men, our forefathers and foremothers that we want to touch on, that had in common was what? They had wisdom. That's what, what, that's what made them great. That's what made their names to live forever. That's why we're able to talk about them this day because of what great wisdom that the Lord put upon them. And they taught the people, they led the people, they set the nation in order. They organized the people because of what? The wisdom that the Lord bestowed on them. And they kept the commandments that was faithful in his laws. Read that now. First Maccabees 2 verse 51. Come on. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 51. Read. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their name, in their time. He says, call to remember. He says, remember the acts, the great acts that our forefathers did in their time. You understand? Read. So shall you receive great honor and an everlasting mm -hmm. name. You see that part right there? You shall receive great honor and an everlasting name. Because the name is important. The name endures forever. That's why you must have a good name in Israel. When your name comes up, we must not be flinching. You understand? When your name comes up, we must not be scratching our head. Mm -mm. When your name comes up, that's a good brother right there. That's a good sister right there. You have to build your name in Israel. I cannot do it for you. You must build it by your good works. You understand? You must do that thing. Watch this. Read that again. That's what this class is about, to build you up to build your name in Israel. Read that again. First Maccabees chapter two, verse 51. Read. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Mm -hmm. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. Come on, read on. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation and mm -hmm. it was imputed unto him for righteousness. You see that thing? Because Abraham was, what, what happened to Abraham? The Lord tested him. You understand? Sacrifice your only son. And he did it. When he was about to do it, the Lord said, okay, I see you can do it now. Why? Because our forefather Abraham had great faith. You understand? So when you're lacking in faith, you read about our forefather Abraham and you build yourself up. Okay, read the book of Hebrews 11. You understand? So you can understand the great, the great acts our forefathers did to show great faith they had to the Lord. Read. Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment mm -hmm. and was made Lord of Egypt. So Joseph in his distress, because remember what Pharaoh's wife wanted Joseph to do. Pharaoh's wife wanted Joseph to lay with him. You understand? To have sex with him, to commit adultery. And Joseph said, no, he ran away. You understand? Why? Because he understood he must discipline himself because why? He's going to have a good name in the future. Today, we are able to tell of his wisdom. You understand? And we can learn from it. Read. Phineas, our father, in being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. That's our forefather Phineas, because one of our forefathers, he was dealing with a Moabite woman, and he killed them both. That's why he got an everlasting name this day, an everlasting priesthood. Go ahead. Jesus, for fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Israel. The Jesus is making reference to Joshua. Give me Nehemiah 8 verse 17 real quick. Jesus, because the word Jesus is Joshua, okay? Or oh, Yeshua, or oh, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai. Okay, read that. Nehemiah 8 verse 17. Read. 
Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 17. Read. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths. So when he says and, they made booths, hold on. When they made booths, this is the Feast of Tabernacles now. They made booths on the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. And sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, and Joshua day, is Joshua is Joshua, Jesus. Joshua is Joshua. You understand? Joshua or Jesus, the son of Nun. Go ahead. For since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so, mm -hmm. and there was very great gladness. Because there were, we were keeping, we were observing the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, let's go back. First Maccabees. I just wanted to just explain that part. First Maccabees 2 verse 55 again. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 55. Mm -hmm. Jesus, for fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Israel. Read. Caleb, for bearing witness before the congregation, received the heritage of the land. Because remember, Caleb, when he was sent with Joshua, when when the when Joshua, when Moses sent the spies out to spy out the land, our forefathers, those that were supposed to go and spy out the land, they came with a negative report because they did not go and check because of what they was afraid of the what the Canaanites. It was only Joshua and Caleb that came with a positive report. You understand? Read. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Because David, when he was supposed to kill Saul, he did not. He had mercy upon Saul. Read. Elias, for being zealous and favored for the law, was taken up into heaven. That's Elijah. That's, you can read about that in 2 Kings. When Elijah was taken up in a cloud, in a chariot. Go ahead. Ananias. Azarias and Mazael, by believing, were saved out of the flame. You can read about that in Daniel 1. That's, that's, uh, they gave them the names under the Babylonian captivity by the Babylonian eunuch. You understand? They gave them names like, they gave them names um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's them here. Read. Daniel, for his innocence, he was delivered from the mouth of lions. Because they put them in there so that they can be eaten by lions, but the Lord delivered them out. Ray, come on, watch and this. And thus, consider ye throughout all ages. Throughout what? That throughout all ages. All generations from the time of Adam unto this day. Read. That none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. If you put your trust in the Lord, you're not going to be overcome by your sins. Why? Give me, give me that in uh, Psalms 18 verse 23. Watch this. You put your trust in the Lord, you will not be overcome. By what? By your sins, by the evils in the world. Because why? You keep in the commandments. Watch this. Psalms 18, verse 23. Read that. Psalm chapter 18, verse 23. Mm -hmm. I was also upright before him. Read. And I kept myself from my iniquity. You hear what David is saying? It says, I was also upright before him. He was upright before the Lord. And he says, I kept myself from my iniquity, meaning his sins. You understand? Give me Colossians 3 verse 5. We're coming back here. Colossians 3 verse 5. This is how he kept himself from his iniquity, meaning the lusts of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is what kept him from his iniquity. Watch this. Colossians 3 verse 5. This is what David did. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Go ahead. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and Read. covetousness, which is idolatry. Which You see that thing? All of these, these are idols right here. You understand? Fornicate, he says, mortify. To mortify means to deaden, put to death, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Because we are here on earth. And here on earth, there's many temptations here on earth. You understand? Fornication is a temptation on earth. Uncleanness on earth. Inordinate affection. Evil concupiscence. Evil sexual desires and lusts. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. For which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. 
Because when we disobedience to God's laws, we're going to walk, we are not going to mortify these members. We're going to indulge in them. That's the point. Go ahead, verse 7. In the which you also walked some time when you mm -hmm. lived in them. You see that thing? He says, in the which you also, meaning us now, the brothers and sisters in the camp now, yes, it says, in the which ye also walked some time when we were in the world, ye, when ye lived in them, because we indulge in these things. Now we are repenting. We are no longer indulging in those things. We are disciplining our minds and our spirits. So what did King David do? Go back to Psalms 18 verse 23. Now we understand what he says when he says he kept himself from his iniquity. This is what he did, what we just read in Colossians. Read that. Psalm. 18 verse 23. Go ahead. I was also upright before him and mm -hmm. I kept myself from my iniquity. Because what did he do? He mortified those members. He kept it. That's how he kept himself from his sins. He deadened those members. He did not indulge in them. You understand? He disciplined his spirit. Watch this. Give me Sarak 32 verse 30, Sarak 32 verse 14. Sarak 32 verse 14. Watch this. Hmm. Sarak 32, uh, verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 14. Go ahead. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. We went over this a couple of days ago. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. You will receive the discipline of the Lord. What is that? Hold this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 17. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. This is the discipline that you will receive if you fear the Lord. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 17. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 17. Come on. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. So the very true beginning of her, the her is wisdom. It says, is the desire of discipline. When you desire something, that means you love it. Okay? You desire discipline. Go ahead. And the care of discipline is love. So if you care about discipline, you have love in you. What love is that? Next verse. Come on. And love is the keeping of her laws. Stop right there. And love is the keeping of her law. So if you care for discipline, you have the laws of God in you. He says, and the care of discipline is love. What is love? The keeping of God's laws. That's what love is. So when you keep God's commandments, guess what? You have discipline in you. So that's how King David kept himself from his, from his sins. Because what? He cared about discipline. What is the discipline? God's commandments. Read that again, verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. Is the assurance of immortality, meaning what? Living forever, ruling forever. Okay, Dominating the, dominating the nations on earth forever. But the key is discipline. When you care about discipline, you have love in you, which is God's laws. God's laws are going to keep you away from your iniquity. Then you're going to be upright before the Lord. That's what King David is saying. You understand? So the same thing he did, we must do it today. Everybody is dealing with something. Everybody is dealing with a vice. And that vice, your job is to keep yourself from it. That's your job. How do you do that? You dare in those members. Okay, you apply. You keep in touch with brothers and sisters. Okay, go back. Sarak 32 verse 14, come on. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32 verse 14. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline, mm -hmm. and they that seek him early shall find favor. So they that seek him early, they, they shall find favor because you love to receive his discipline. Because you love to receive his discipline, you want to find favor in the sight of the Lord. Now, Sarah 18, verse 14. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 18, verse 14. Come on. He has mercy on them that receive discipline mm -hmm. and that diligently seek after his judgments. You see what he's saying? The Lord is going to have mercy upon you if you receive his discipline, if you receive his laws. You receive correction, you take it to the correction, you apply. When you do that, the Lord says, I'm going to have mercy upon you. I will have favor. Saying the same thing we read in Sarah 32, verse 14, that diligently seek after his judgment. Why? Because you understand what the judgment of the Lord is 
if you don't receive his discipline, the Lord will destroy you. You understand? Because you fear his judgments. Okay. Now, go back to Psalms 18, verse 23. Psalms chapter 18, verse 23. Go ahead. I was also upright before him, and mm -hmm. I kept myself from mine iniquity. He kept himself from his iniquity, meaning he what? He did not give in to his lusts. You understand? Read. Therefore, has the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. Stop right there. He says, therefore, because I kept myself from my iniquity, he says, the Lord recompensed, meaning what? He rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to because he what? He was keeping the commandments. So you are everybody in here. When the Lord returns, you are going to be recompensed according to your righteousness. You keeping God's commandments. Read. According to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. According to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. Read on. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. Mm -hmm. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. So if you are upright, like we read in verse 23, you may, that means what? You are keeping yourself from your iniquities. That's, how you, that's what it means. It says, with an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. Meaning the Lord will deal with you according to his mercy and according to his wisdom. Read. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. Mm -hmm. And with the forward, thou will show thyself forward. And with the forward, thou will show thyself forward. Meaning what? The forward is those that do not want to keep God's commandments. They are proud. They don't want to keep the laws of God. Because if you don't want to keep God's commandments, you are proud. The Lord will destroy you. The Lord says, I also will show myself forward towards you. You understand? So our job is to do what? Go back now. Because I gave an, I was just giving an example of what our forefathers did in their time. Watch this. First Maccabees 2. Okay. First Maccabees 2 verse 61. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 51. 61. One, six one. Come on. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. If you put your trust in the Lord, you will not be overcome. Watch this. Give me that in Sirach 2, verse 10. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 2, verse 10. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Look at the generations of old and see. Mm -hmm. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Come on. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? None. You see what he's saying? He says, look at the generations of old, meaning what? Consider the days of old. You understand? And see. How are you going to see? Because you're going to be what? The Lord has left examples in here. And the other way you're going to see it is what? It's because those forefathers, those righteous forefathers and foremothers, they are back, including the wicked ones. But I'm talking about those righteous men and women that what? That had a great reputation in the sight of the Lord. He says, he says what? He says, look at the generations of old and see. How are you going to see them? Because they are back and they will set the right example of how you must move. You see, this verse is heavy right here. Look at the generations of old and see. How are you going to see them? Yes, you're going to read about this. You're going to read about them in the scriptures, but you are going to see them as well. How? Because the Lord will bring them back. They are back right now. You understand? You read that again, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 10. Read. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? The minute we you see yourself, hold on. The minute you see yourself being confounded in this truth, it means you don't trust in the Lord. You are trusting in something else. The minute you see yourself being confounded by simple things, you all of a sudden you don't understand the scripture you used to understand. That means you're trusting not in the Lord, but in something different. It's no longer the most I know more. It's something else. And that's a worldly thing that you trust upon. And that meaning also your mind. You trust upon your mind. Because it says, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? You will not be confounded if you put your trust in the Lord. You won't be. You understand? Read. Or oh, did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? So if you abide in the fear of the Lord, you will not be forsaken. 
But when you are forsaken, it's because you are not longer abiding in the fear of the Lord. You forgot your first love, which is what? Christ. Okay, come on. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? The Lord does not, will not despise any brother or sister that call, if you call upon the Lord with sincerity and in truth, the Lord will hear you. You understand? And if you see us about, about um, this truth, you will apply because that's the biggest thing. You can have the Bible, but if you don't apply, it means nothing. The Lord is not going to remember you. You are a waste of time in the sight of the Lord. So your job is to what? All our job is to apply. That's the key. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs 22 verse 1. Proverbs 22 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1. Read. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Mm -hmm. And love in favor rather than silver and gold. So it says you must choose a good name. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Because you see, the, our forefathers that came before us, they had good names, good reputation in the sight of the Most High God. So when you choose a name, because we, we will see your character and see the names that match up with that character. You understand? Based on you applying and the works you're doing in the body. So it says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor than silver and gold. Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1. Read. A good name is better than precious ointment. Mm. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1. Come on. A good name is better than precious ointment. Mm -hmm. and the day of death than the day of one's birth so it says a good name is better a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth because when you die you are addressed like we read in Job chapter 3 verse 13 Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 when you die your spirit goes back to the Lord you are addressed but it says than the day of one's birth because when you are born give me that in Sirach Okay, because today when, as we are born now in this captivity, watch this. This is what happens to us when we are born in this captivity, because we're in captivity right now. Okay. Verse 9, Sarak 41 verse 9, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 41 verse 9. And if ye be born, mm -hmm. ye shall be born to a curse. You see that thing? If you be born, you shall be born to a curse. You understand? If, if you are born, the Lord, by the way, because the Lord has not returned yet. People are born every day. They are born to a curse. Our people. So it says, if ye be born, ye shall be born to a curse. We are going to be born into the curses that are written in Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, Joel 3, and so forth. Uh, Isaiah 22. Okay. We are going to be born into a curse in captivity. Read on. And if you die, a curse shall be your portion. Because you will not die while you are still in captivity. You understand? But guess what? When you die, you go back to the Lord, you are addressed. That's what he's saying right there. But let's go back to Ecclesiastes 7 verse 1. Let's read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1. Mm -hmm. A good name is better than precious ointment. Go ahead. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. So a good name is better than precious ointment. You must have a good name in Israel. Your name, you must not have an ill name because if you have a good name, you that means you are doing the works, you follow counsel, you apply, you have you understand, you are you, are, you have a quiet and a meek spirit, you want to learn so you can apply, so you can you don't do your own thing. You always must be in the same mind, the same judgment as leadership. That's the mindset you must have because we all must speak the same thing. That's the key. That's the unity. That's what brings us together, the laws of God. So it says you must have a good name. You understand? So every brother and sister in here is your job to, to build yourself a good name in Israel. Watch this. Give me Sirach 41 verse 12. Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus chapter 41 verse 12. 
41 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 41 verse 12. Come on. Have regard to thy name. Have regard. Have regard to thy name. Have regard to thy name. Go ahead. For that shall continue with thee above a thousand great treasures of gold. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 41 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Have regard to thy name. Mm -hmm. For that shall continue with thee above a thousand great treasures of gold. He says that good name, he says, is going to what? Is going to continue with thee above a thousand great treasures of gold. Yes, because when you, read, when you read the history of our forefathers, they was wealthy. Our forefather Abraham, they say he was rich. Give me that in uh, Genesis. Okay. Genesis, I believe it's chapter 13. Give me Genesis real quick. Genesis 13 and verse 2. Start at verse 1. We're going to read 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, mm -hmm. and lot with him into the south. So all that he had, it goes into what we're going to read the next verse. Read the next verse. Come on. And Abram was very rich in cattle, mm -hmm. in silver, and in gold. So do we remember Abraham for his riches? No. We remember Abraham because what did he do? Give me that in Genesis now. Genesis chapter 26, verse 5. This is what we remember our forefather Abraham for. Not because of the great riches in, that we just read in Genesis 13, verse 2. No, because of this. Read that. Genesis chapter 26, verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice mm -hmm. and kept my charge, my read. commandments, my statutes, and my laws. That's why Abraham, our forefather, we remember him today because of what? He had a great reputation with the Most High. He kept the commandments. He obeyed the voice of the Lord, his God. He kept his charge, his commandments, his statutes, and his laws. You see this thing? That's what we remember Abraham for. King Solomon, the richest man on earth. But we don't remember his riches. not for. We remember his wisdom. That's why we have wisdom. So we've got the book of Proverbs. We've got Ecclesiastes. Okay, why? Because of what? Because of his great wisdom that the Lord bestowed on him. So your good name will be associated with the wisdom you have. You understand? And the good works you do behind that name. And that will endure forever above a thousand great treasures of gold. You understand? Go back. Sirach 41, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 41, verse 12. Read. Have regard to thy name, mm -hmm. for that shall continue with thee above a thousand great treasures of gold. Watch this. Keep going. A good life has but few days. Read. But a good name endureth forever. But a good name endureth forever. A good life has but a few days, because we are mortal men now. But it says, but a good name endureth forever. Your good name will endure forever and ever. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 33, verse 12. Exodus 33, verse 12. This is our forefather Moses. You understand? When the Lord showed him his back, okay, his back parts, his hand and all that. Okay, watch this. We went over this when we're going over. Nobody has seen, uh, nobody has seen the father and live. Nobody has seen God face to face. I think we went over at last like that. Read that, Exodus 33, read verse 12. Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, mm -hmm. thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people. And thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. Stop and right thou there. Hast... Hold on. He says, I what? I know thee by name. He says, I know you by name, Moses. I know you by name. So that so did he not know Moses' name? Of course, in of course he knew Moses' name. What is he talking about? He's talking about his reputation. He knows Moses because of Moses' reputation that he what? That he developed with the father. You understand? Read that again. I know thee by what? I know thee by name. I know thee by name, meaning by reputation. Read. 
And thou hast also found grace in my sight. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. He found grace in the sight of the Lord because of his reputation. Jump down to verse 17 now. Watch this. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Because what Moses was saying to the Lord was saying, listen, yes, we're going to go into the promised land, but I'm not going to go in. No, I'm not going to go in without you. You have to be with us. You understand? If you are not with us, we're not going to go. So promise that you're going to go with us. Then he said, okay. I'll go with you. Then the next thing he says, he, want, he asked, he says, show me thy glory, because that's the next thing he asked. But he says what? Because thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name, meaning by reputation. Watch this. I'll give an example. Give me Numbers 12. Numbers chapter 12. This is when Miriam and Aaron were murmuring against Moses for marrying an Egyptian woman, an Ethiopian woman. Watch this. Numbers 12, verse 1. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Mm -hmm. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Go ahead. And they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. So now they are complaining and murmuring against Moses right here. So, and one of the complaints is, have the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Meaning, is the Lord only dealing with you? He's also dealing with us. Isn't this the same thing that uh, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did? Yeah, that's the same thing. He said, they said, Moses, we're all the same. That's what they said. That's what they said in number 16. They said, no, the whole congregation were all the same. I'll give, watch this. Number 16 real quick. Number 16 and verse 1. Then we're going to jump. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now Korah, the son of Isa, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and on, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, two men. So now there's a coup d'etat. This is a coup d'etat right here. Read. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel. 250 princes of the assembly, mm -hmm. famous in the congregation, men of renown. So these were famous men. These were like, these are like captains and all of that. These are famous men. You understand? They are famous for their wisdom, right? Quote, unquote. Okay. Because it's going to show that they got none. But in their, in their minds, they thought they had wisdom, but they did not. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. You see that and thing against them. the hold on, wait, wait. They gather themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, against the leadership. The same thing that Aaron and Miriam was doing against Moses. Right. And said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Uh -huh. Every one of them, and the Lord is among them. The Lord is dealing with everyone the same way. He's dealing with, with uh, you, Moses and Aaron. You understand? It says, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Meaning the Lord is dealing with them also. He's not just dealing with you, Moses, and Aaron. Go ahead. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? You see what they are saying? These are some black ashy demons right here. Okay, I just wanted to give that example because the Lord destroyed them. He didn't reward them for this wicked behavior. Go back to Numbers 12. Numbers 12 and verse 2 now. Again. Numbers chapter 12 verse 2. Go ahead. And they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. The Lord heard this thing because the Lord heard their murmuring and their complaining. Next verse. Come on. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. That's why he had a good reputation, you understand, in Israel. Because he says what? He was the, he was, he says Moses was very meek. Meaning what? He humbled himself down to what this Bible says. 100. Above all the men which are upon the face of the earth. Well, that's heavy. 
above all the men that are upon the face. That's why Moses, the things he saw, when the Lord judged him, the Lord was mad. He says, you are not entering in at this time. But Moses is going to be in the kingdom because if it is 2nd Ezra 14, you see the stuff that the Lord showed Moses. Moses will be in the kingdom. But the point is, Moses, he says, was the meekest man on earth. That's why he developed such a reputation with the father. What I'm showing you is the key ingredient in all these men and women that we're going to deal with later on is the commandments of the Most High. They humbled down to this Bible. That's why they were able to get a good reputation because as they applied and humbled down, they didn't use their emotions. They applied what was written. Guess what? The Lord exalted them. The Lord put the spirit of what wisdom on them. Why? Because they, they, what? they believed and they had faith and they applied to show that they believe and they have faith. Okay, watch this. Um, jump down to verse seven. Numbers chapter 12, verse seven. My servant Moses is not so, who mm -hmm. is faithful in all mine house. You see that thing? It says, my servant Moses is not like that. It's not like y'all. Who is faithful in all mine house? The Lord, Moses was, Moses had great faith. Moses had great faith. Because remember, Moses was the prince of Egypt. He was the one that was planning military operations in Egypt to conquer all the other Canaanite nations under Pharaoh. You understand? So when he had the truth, when the Lord called him, guess what he did? He, he left. You understand? He chose rather to suffer the afflictions, of, the afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So imagine... You are a you are a minister of defense. Look, look at I mean Egypt was the top, was the top kingdom on earth at the, at, during his time. Now look at now fast forward to today, America. Now you are the you are the you are the you are the minister of defense, all of defense of America. That's not a small position. Because then you advise the president. You understand about military operations, military tactics, how to attack, how to conquer, so on and so forth. You understand? Warfare. He understood all of that. So now, from that position, he said, you know what? I'm going to go to the streets now to teach the gospel. That's some heavy faith right there. You see that thing? Moses had great faith. Now, let's go back now. Give me Sarah 44 now, verse 16. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verse 16. Ecclesiasticus chapter 44 verse 16 read Enoch pleased the Lord mm -hmm. and was translated being an example of repentance to all generations There's the generation when this is all generations that talks to talk about up to, to us and beyond Enoch he says Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated because he says what being an example you see that key right there? He was an example of repentance. That means what did he do? He applied God's commandments and he, what, he was an example to the people in his time so that even today we can still follow that example. You see, that, that's some heavy to all generations. He pleased the Lord. Watch this. Give me that in Sirach. Okay, chapter 2, verse 15. Sarah 2, verse 15. Watch this. You know what? Hmm. Yeah, read verse 15. Let's start at verse 15. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 15. Go ahead. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Mm -hmm. And they that love him will keep his ways. That's why this Bible, our people, they hate this book. You see how plain this is written? They that fear the Lord will not will not disobey his word. So you have to sit down and really do some calculations here and say, which means if I do not obey what is written, I don't fear the Lord. So you have to sit down and really calculate it and say, because you can convince yourself and say, no, but I fear the Lord. No, the Bible says, if you fear the Lord, you will not disobey his word, meaning you will keep his commandments. You're not going to make excuses. You see, this walk, this walk is not for the faint hearted. Yeah. This is some heavy stuff right here. Read that again, verse 15. Hmm. 
Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Go ahead. And they that love him will keep his ways. They that love him will keep his ways, meaning his commandments, his word. Next verse, come on. They that fear the Lord will seek. Uh, read that again. You got cut off there. Verse 16 again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. Mm -hmm. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. You see that thing? That which is well pleasing unto him is the law. That which is well pleasing unto the most high God is the law. Give me that in Isaiah 42. Okay. Isaiah 42, 21. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. You see that thing? He's well pleased for his righteousness sake. He's well pleased. So when he says Enoch pleased the Lord, guess what? He pleased the Lord because of what? The righteousness that he did before the Lord. That's why he was able to please the Lord. And because how he pleased the Lord, he was translated. He never saw death. He was taken up. Okay. Read that again. Verse 42. I mean, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So now Christ, when he came on the earth, he magnified the law and made it honorable. That's why we must keep the laws because he taught the law. We, he taught the law and he taught us to keep the law. You understand? And make the law honorable just like he did. Our forefather Enoch, he did the same thing. He pleased the Lord and he magnified the law. He magnified the law and made it honorable. That's what we are doing this day. When we apply God's commandments, we are magnifying the law before our people. Some of our people, they are wicked as hell. Our family members, our, our mothers, our father, they are wicked as hell. They don't want to do what this Bible says. When you bring them the scriptures, or oh, don't judge me, or oh, don't do this, because that's the spirit of Christianity. Christianity is void of judgment. You don't, only God can judge me. If the Lord is to come down and judge you, you'll be put to death. Ah, people don't get that. Because why? They have the spirit of pride on them. You understand? The Lord said this, no, only God can judge me. That's the spirit of Satan, okay? That's the devil on them. Watch this. Let's go back. Sarak 2, verse 16, once again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 16. Read. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. Mm -hmm. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. If you love the Lord, you'll be filled with his laws. But the key is well pleasing. If you want to please the Lord, you must keep the commandments and magnify the laws of God and make it honorable. Let's go back now. Sarak 44, verse 16 again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 44, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated, being an example of repentance to all generations. So Enoch pleased the Lord. How? He magnified the law and made it honorable. He kept the commandments and he was translated. He was taken up. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 4. Real quick. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 7. Let's start there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 verse 7. Now I'm, I'm dealing with, he says he was translated, he was taken up. But let's get some details. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 verse 7. Go ahead. But though the righteous be prevented with death. Hold, he says yes, the righteous, are, hold on. He says, but though the righteous be prevented with death, meaning what? Those are our forefathers, they died in this truth. You understand? The apostles, our foremothers, their wives and all that. He says they were prevented with death, prevented from the evils of this world with death. They died for this truth. Okay, come on. Yet shall he be in rest. The same rest that we read 
in Sirach 44, the same verse we read in Job 3, verse 13. Go ahead, watch this. Jump down. Jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. He pleased God and mm -hmm. was beloved of him. Mm -hmm. So that living among sinners, he was translated. Now, that's the verse I actually want. Verse 10, he says, he pleased God. That also goes into somewhat like it, but this, the way that the verse 7 explains those that die in this truth. Verse 10 goes into those that were translated. They never saw death, like Enoch, like Elijah. You see that? Read verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 10. Mm -hmm. He pleased God and was beloved of him, so that living among sinners, he was translated. So our forefather Enoch, he pleased God, just like Elijah did. They pleased the Lord and they were beloved of the Lord. So that living among sinners, he was translated. Just like Christ. Remember after Christ resurrected, what happened? He was translated. He left. He did what he was supposed to and he was translated. He says, so that living among sinners, he was translated. He was translated. You understand? Watch this. Keep going. Yay. Speedily was he taken away. Stop right there. You see verse 10 when he says, so that living among sinners, he was translated. Because what would the sinners do? Or those of our, our, our brothers and sisters in the world, what do they do? Give me Proverbs 12, verse 26. Because this is what our people do. When they see you, because you remember what the scripture says, say, good is said against evil. The godly against the sinner. When they see you wanting to keep God's commandments, and they, when they, no, let, let me rephrase it. When they see you applying God's laws, you are strange. The way you are acting, they don't recognize you. The certain things you do doesn't make sense to them because the laws of God does that if you apply what is written. Okay? Well, this is what they will do. Watch this. Proverbs 12, verse 26. Come on. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Read. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous is more excellent. The righteous excels the neighbor that doesn't keep the commandments. If you keep God's commandments, the law says you are righteous and you excel your neighbor. You understand? In the way you conduct yourself because you apply what is written, you humble down to what this Bible says do. But look, this is the next part of the verse is what our people do when they see you want to apply what is written. When they see you apply what is written. When they see you fight to apply what is written, this is what they will do. Watch this. But the way of the wicked seduces them. But the way of the wicked seduces them. They're going to seduce you. Ah, you don't celebrate birthdays no more. You don't celebrate Christmas. What is wrong with you? You don't, you, uh, you don't buy on the Sabbath. You keep the Sabbath now. You're, you're wearing fringes. What is that on your shirt? You grow a beard now. You don't look untidy. So they're going to tell you all, all men of evil. And when you bring up the Bible, they say, mm, he's so judgmental. He thinks it's better. No, read the verse again. Verse 26. Let's, this is what the Lord is saying. Read again. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Read. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, mm -hmm. but the way of the wicked seduces them. But the way of the wicked will always try to seduce you because good is set against evil. Good is set against evil. I see that thing with our people, especially those of your own house, the people you grew up with, the brothers and sisters that grew up with you, they will always try to pull you back into the world. Watch this. Give me that in Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. Okay. Matthew 10 verse 35, somewhere there. It's not in my notes, so I'm just shooting from the hip. Yes, read that. Matthew 10 verse 35. Matthew chapter 10 verse 35. Go ahead. For I am come to set a man at vengeance against. Why are you going in and out? Read that again. Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. You and see what he daughter... says? He says, I'm come to set a man at variance, meaning at odds. You are going to disagree. The Lord says, I'm going to do that thing. I'm going to make you disagree with your father. Because why? You will be keeping the commandments. He is not. Your mother, you'll be keeping the commandments. They are not. They are still celebrating. Why Jesus? They are still celebrating Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays. They are buying on the Sabbath. You understand? All of that. Birthdays, Valentine's Day, Women's Day. 
they be celebrating all those pagan holidays, all those pagan customs. You understand? And that's how you are going to be at variance. You are going to be at odds. You are going to disagree because you're not in the same mind. Okay, read. And the daughter against her mother. No, no. And the daughter. And the daughter against the what? And the daughter against her mother. No. Again, and, it says, and wait, wait, and the daughter against her what? And the daughter against her mother. Yes, the daughter against her mother. So the daughter will also be at odds with her mother. Why? Because now you're coming into this truth as a daughter, right? As a sister. You Now you start wearing dresses. Because this, the commandment says so. Give me that in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Real quick. Okay? Because now you're starting to apply the laws of God now to your life. Okay? Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman is not allowed to wear that which men wear, which is pants, trousers, leggings, outside. This is where you're walking around with leggings. Those were undergarments. You put a dress on top of it. You understand? They are not supposed to be wearing dress like us, dress like their fathers and their brothers, their uncles. You understand? Their husbands. That's out of order because that woman don't respect you. That woman will not, that she's saying, I don't respect you. I don't respect you and I will not submit myself to you. That's what she's saying. You understand? That means what? She don't see you as a man. Is that simple? Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a dress. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That's the law right there. That is the law. But you see that part which says, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Some men, they put on a woman's garment in the spirit. I said something right there, right? Some men put a woman's garment in the spirit. What I mean by that? The way they behave, they act like a woman. Because they, they are women dresses like them. So who's the man who's the woman? She's the man, you the woman. Because you will not tell her, listen, why you dress like me? You cannot be dressing like me. That's out of order. Even in nature, you don't see stuff like that. It's only when the people go against this Bible, you start to see disorder in marriages. Men submitting to their wives, women ruling over them. In spirit, that's what, that's what some men, a lot of men, they are like this. He's wearing pants and his wife is also wearing pants. So who's the woman? He's the woman. Read that again, verse 5. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Mm -hmm. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Because this is cross-dressing. You understand? Let's go back. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 35. Go ahead. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father mm -hmm. and a daughter against her mother. You see that thing? And her, a daughter against her mother. Because now you're going to apply what the Lord says. The Lord says, you know, suppose, as a sister, you're supposed to wear a dress. A flowy dress where we don't see the shape of your body because that belongs to your husband. You understand? So now when you start to dress like that, these wicked mothers in the world, I show some skin. Why you dress like that? And all of, that's what they say, by the way. You understand? So that's what's going to happen. You're going to start to change the way you dress. Sisters are going to be putting long dresses on. They're going to be putting fringes on. They're going to be putting their, they're going to have their head covering on. You see what I'm saying? All of that. Saying, I don't want to have a boyfriend because it's against the laws of God. I'm going to prepare myself and prepare myself for, to be a wife. All of that is, you see that, that is going to make you to be at variance with your mother if she hates this book. Okay, come on. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The laws of God will make you fight with your in-laws. Why? Because they don't want to keep the laws and you do. And as you are doing it, they're going to hate you for it. They will try to seduce you at first. You understand? They see it's not working. Then they're going to go through those stage, five stages of dying. They're going to fight you. 
You understand? They're going to bargain until they accept or no, this is how it is. You understand? The Bible is undefeated. This is the heavyweight champion. The Bible is undefeated. Go ahead. Verse 36. Watch this. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. And a man's enemies shall be they of his own house. The, pe the, the first people to fight against you is going to be the people in your own house. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your, your cousin, so your kids, so on and so forth. Yes, that's what the Lord is saying. Because of what? Because of this book right here. Because of what is written in this Bible. Now, where was we at? Um, Proverbs. Yes. No, no, no. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and verse 10. Yes, sir. Because we read Proverbs 12, 26. We read Proverbs 12, 26 that the, 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 the wicked of our people will try to seduce those that keep the commandments. Now, Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 10. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 10. Go ahead. He pleased God and was mm. beloved of him so that living among sinners, he was translated. Because when he was living among sinners, those sinners were trying to what? To seduce him. The Lord translated him before they could defile him. That's the same thing that happened with Christ. Next verse. Come on. Yea, speedily was he taken away. Speedily. Less than wickedness. Speedily. Speedily was he taken away by who? The Mosai grabbed him up. Read. Lest that wickedness should alter his understanding mm -hmm. or deceit beguile his soul. You see that thing? Lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. And because he was living among what? Those that don't give a damn about this Bible. When you correct them, they say, no, don't judge me. Only God can judge me. That is not in the Bible. Only God can judge me. That's Tupac. You understand? Thug life. You can find that in the in the in the in the, in the DVD CD collection of Tupac. You understand? Thug life. Only God can judge me. That's not in the Bible. The only God can, can judge me is not found in the Holy Bible. Watch this. Um, let's go back to Enoch now. Okay, Sarah 44, verse 16. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verse 16. Read. Enoch pleased the Lord mm. and was translated, being an example of repentance to all generations. So Enoch, our forefather, was an example of repentance. He kept the commandments because how do you repent? You keep God's laws. If you read Acts 3 verse 19. So he kept the commandments and he set the right example for, for the generations after him. Give me the book of Jude verse 14 and 15. Jude verse 14. The book of Jude, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, mm -hmm. prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. That's the same thing that when he said, the, he said, the Lord comes, cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, so he says, but he says, he prophesied of these. So our forefather Enoch, what was he doing? He was teaching. He was prophesying. He was teaching the people the law. He was prophesying. Go ahead. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed mm -hmm. and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. The ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Him who? Enoch, because he was, what was he doing? He was preaching to the people and they spoke against him. Isn't the same thing that we are going through today? Yes, the same thing. People speaking evil of us because of what? We bring in the word of the most High God and we are applying what is written. Okay, give me Genesis chapter 5 verse 21. I just want to touch on our forefather Enoch because there's, you would say there's, there's not a lot, there's not a lot that is written about him. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. Read. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. Read. 
and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat mm. sons and daughters. So now it says Enoch walked with God. So this man, he was so righteous that the Lord said, you know what? He's not going to see death. I'm going to take him up. Elijah, the same way. This is heavy stuff, man. Read. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. Read, come on. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. When he says he was not, because he was translated, he was taken up. Now, Sirach 44, verse 17 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 17. Read. Noah was found perfect and righteous. Mm -hmm. In the name of wrath, he was taken in exchange. In the for no, in the time, in the time of wrath, meaning during the time of the flood. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 17. Go ahead. Noah was found perfect and righteous. Mm -hmm. In the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world. He says Noah was taken in exchange for the world. Meaning what? If it was not for Noah, the whole earth would be wiped out. So the Lord used Noah as an exchange, you understand, to continue life here on this earth. Read because of his righteousness. Come on. Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth when mm. the flood came. You see that thing? Come on. An everlasting covenant was made with him that all flesh should perish no more by the flood. That all flesh should perish no more by the flood. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 9. Might be verse 15 somewhere there. Down. Come on. Abraham was the great father of many people. Mm -hmm. In glory was there none like unto him. Because he was perfect. He was called the friend of the Lord. Read. Who kept the law of the Most High mm -hmm. and was in covenant with him. He established a covenant in his flesh. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. When Abraham was proved, he was found faithful. Now watch this. What we're reading here is what? Is the examples our forefathers had. The good name, the good reputation they had in Israel. Because of what? Keeping of God's commandments. It was not because of their riches. It was not because of their good looks. No. It was because of what? Keeping of God's laws. And when they did that, the Lord exalted them. Watch this. Sarag 49 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 49 verse 1. Come on. The remembrance of Josias is like the composition of the perfume that is made by the art of the apothecary. This is King Josias now. King Josias. Go ahead. It is sweet as honey in all mouths. Mm -hmm. and, as a and as music at a banquet of wine. Mm. This is the remembrance of our forefather, King Josiah. This is beautiful stuff right here. Go ahead. He behaved himself uprightly in the conversion of the people. In the what? In the conversion of the people. He says he behaved himself uprightly in the conversion of the people. What did he, he how did, what, what, when he says in the conversion, what was he doing? He was upholding God's commandments and he converted the people to what? To repent and keep the commandments of the Most High. Read on. And took away the abominations of iniquity. Meaning idols. Because we was during the time of the kings, there was a lot of evil that was happening in Israel. Go ahead. He directed his heart unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the time of the ungodly, he established the worship of God. Because what? He built the temple. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings 22, verse 1. 2 Kings 22. So those of you that are reading your four chapters, you'll understand what we're going over here. Okay, 2 Kings 22, verse 1. Watch this. 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Read. Excuse me. Second Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Read. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. So Jedidah. 
So his mother's name was Jedida. Keep going, verse two, come on. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord mm. and walked in all the way of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Meaning he wasn't double-minded. You understand? He walked, he says he walked in all the way of David, his father. Meaning he followed after King David's footsteps. Okay, come on. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, meaning to the temple, read on, to speak to the priests, read. Go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. Meaning what? Because the people were, this were these, these are what? These are free will offerings and so forth. For the what? For the, for the, for, for the temple. For the running of the temple. You understand? Read. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Meaning those that are doing the work that have the oversight, meaning what? Those that are managing this work. Read. And let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to mm -hmm. repair the breaches of the house. To do what? To repair the breaches of the house. Because that's what we're doing right now. The same thing that King Josiah did today we're doing while repairing the breach. Spiritually, we're repairing the breach now. You understand? There's a breach between us and the Lord. Now we are, the, we are called the repairer of the breach. You can read about it in Isaiah 58. You understand? We are called the repairer of the breach. Let's read that real quick. Isaiah 58, might be verse 12. Yeah, read that. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. Go ahead. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old ways places. Thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Thou shalt be what? Restorer. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. That's what Josiah did. He was a repairer of the breach. That's what we're doing today. We are called the repairer of the breach. Go ahead. The restorer of paths to dwell in. The path to dwell in is the path of righteousness. You understand? That's what our forefather Josiah did. Go back to Sarah 49 now. Sarah 49, verse 5. Sarah 49, verse 4. Ecclesiastes, chapter 49, verse 4. You know what? No, no. Go back to Second Kings. Something I want to touch on. Second Kings 22, read verse 19. Second Kings chapter 22, verse 19. Go ahead. Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place, and mm -hmm. against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent my clothes and wept before me, no, I has rent also... thy, hold on, and has rent thy clothes. And he humbled himself. He was fasting before the Lord. You understand? Because Josiah was a righteous king. Go ahead. And has rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, says the Lord. Read. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers. There's 20. Come on. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. Mm. And thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. You see what the Lord is telling you? see what the Lord is saying to Josiah? Yeah, hey, that's, what we, that's what we read about. Uh, he had a good reputation in Israel, King Josiah. Go back to Sarah 49 now, verse 4. Sarah 49, verse 4. Read that. Ecclesiastes, chapter 49, verse 4. Mm -hmm. All except David and Ezekiah and Josiah were defective. Were defective, meaning there was evil as hell. Read. For they forsook the law of the Most High, even mm -hmm. the kings of Judah failed. So because those except these three, 
David Hezekiah, Hezekiah, Hezekiah is Hezekiah. You can read about that in um, 2 Kings chapter 18, when he took over, okay? Uh, he destroyed all the, the idols that they was worshiping, including that, uh, that serpent that Moses made in the wilderness in Numbers 21, okay? So it says, all except David, Hezekiah, Josiah were defective. For they forsook the law of the Most High, meaning they did not keep the commandments of the Lord. Even the kings of Judah failed. Okay? Watch this. Give me Sarah 41, verse 11. Ecclesiastes, chapter 41, verse 11. Read. Really? The moaning of men is about their bodies. Mm -hmm. But an ill name of sinners shall be blotted out. You see that an ill name of sinners, the moaning of men is about their bodies because why? We die, we, we die today. We are mortal, we're not immortal. We are mortal men. We have corruptible, these bodies are corruptible. You understand? He says, but an ill name of sinners shall be blotted out. Meaning what? If you have an ill name in Israel, you don't fix that. It says, your name is going to be blotted out of this book. This is heavy stuff right here. Watch this. Sarah 44 verse 9. This is the flip side now. This is now, now these examples that we're going over now is what? What we're touching over now is these are black ashy demons. Okay. Sarag 44, verse 9. I believe that's what I want. Come on. It is Yesticus, chapter 44, verse 9. Go ahead. And some there be which have no memorial. Mm. Whoa, 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 whoa. It says, and some there be which have no memorial. Nobody remembers what you've done. Why? Because you have an ill name. When your name comes up, we remember the evil that you've done because you're not applying. You don't want to do nothing to fix it. Okay, come on. Which have no memorial who are perished mm -hmm. as though they had never been. As though they have never been. Meaning as though you've never been born. This is heavy. Read. And are become as though they had never been born. Oh, and their children is, after whoa, them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It says, and are become as though they had never been born. It's as if you've never been born. Remember what Christ said to Judas? He, 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 but he was, yes, he was speaking to you. He was saying, let's read it because I'm paraphrasing it. Remember, Judas walked with the 12. Judas raised the dead. Hmm? He healed the sick. But what Judas did, give me, Saul, give me Matthew 26, verse 21. This is what the black Messiah said. Watch this. Matthew chapter 26, verse 21. Go ahead. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one yeah. of you shall betray me. He said, one of you shall betray me. Remember, those that betrayed Christ in John 6 is those that did not believe. They were always offended. Go ahead. And they were exceeding sorrowful and mm -hmm. began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? So because the disciples, this worried them. It troubled their spirit. Who's that? Who's that that's going to be? Who's, who's going to do that? They was worried. This thing worried them. Go ahead. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. You see, he that dip, he dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Watch this. Go ahead. The son of man goeth as it is written of him. Uh -huh. But woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Woo! That's some heavy stuff right there. Remember, the color of the text is what is red. Who's speaking here? The Lord Jesus Christ. He says it would be better if that man was not even born. Go back to Saragna 44 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 9. Man, this Bible, the, the most, I mean, when you read the Bible, right? The most I just be insulting us here. The whole time. The, the, listen, when you read the Bible, you see the Lord just be insulting us the whole time. All the time. 
when we go off, he comparing us to these dusty Hamites. He says, you are Hamites, you are Hittites to me. You understand? You are Canaanites. He just be cursing us out. Sort his children. He's be calling us that. We are sorish. You understand? We love to do evil. He just be comparing us to like, listen, the Lord be insulting us the whole time. You read the scriptures, you see all of that. Read that. Sarah 44 verse 9. Ecclesiasticus chapter 44 verse 9. And some there be which have no memorial who are perished as though they had never been and are become as though they had never been born and they are children after them. Now this is heavy stuff right here. Hmm. Oh, listen. Yeah, no, this is heavy stuff. Yeah. Okay, give me the book of Sirach 6 and 1. Hmm. Yep, give me Sarah 6 and 1. Ish, I'm going to be moving a little bit faster now. A lot faster. Sarah 6 and 1, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Instead of a friend, become not an enemy. He says, instead of a friend. Remember, you must, the friendship in this Bible is based on what? The commandments of the Most High. You read about it in John 15. He says, instead of a friend, become not an enemy. Be a friend, according to the scriptures. Don't become an enemy. Go ahead. For thereby thou shalt inherit an ill name. Be, you see that thing? You will inherit an ill name. Because guess what? Because you just... Mm, give me Sarah 27 and 1. I'll explain it like this. Sarah 27 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 27 verse 1. Go ahead. Many have sinned for a small matter. You see that part right there? Many have sinned for a small matter. Meaning for something small, you will break God's commandments. Even when there's no need for you to lie, you will bear false witness. Something simple is says, for many, many have sinned for a small matter. You understand? Instant gratification, you will lie just so that you can satisfy whatever lust you have. You understand? Come on. And he that seeketh for abundance will turn his eyes away. Away from the laws of God. Go back to where he was at. Sarah 6 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 1. Come on. Instead of a friend become not an enemy, for thereby thou shalt inherit an ill name. You're going to inherit Shame. an ill name. Hold on. You're going to inherit an ill name because your job is supposed to do what? Apply the commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. Have peace one with another. That's what we read in Mark. You understand? Have peace one with another. Ephesians tells you that we must be what? One body, one spirit, one mind. We must endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So instead of being an enemy, he says become a friend. Because your friendship, which is because it's based on God's laws, what will the laws of God teach you? Have peace with your brother. Okay, come on. For thereby thou shalt inherit an ill name, shame, and reproach. Even so shall a sinner that has a double tongue. Even so shall a sinner that has a double tongue. Because you mama, you complain, you gossip, you understand? All of that stuff. You have an ill name. When your name comes up, oh, not that sister. Not that brother. Oh, that brother again. That sister one more time. Yes. Watch this. Give me. Mm. I'm looking for time. I'm looking at the time now. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me Proverbs. Okay, give me Proverbs 30 verse 21. Proverbs 30 verse 21. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 21. Come on. For a servant... No, no. When he no, 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 no. Proverbs thirty verse twenty one. Proverbs thirty verse twenty one. Come on. For three things the earth is disquieted, and and for four which it cannot bear. So it says there's three things which there's three things which the earth is disquieted. Meaning what? Disturbed. You understand? Three things that disturb the earth, and for four which it cannot bear. Watch this. Come on. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. Mm -hmm. Because he's covetous. Read. 
for an odious woman when she is married mm -hmm. and an handmaid that is heir to her mistress. And an handmaid that is heir to her mistress because remember, um, when you read the history of our foremother Sarah with Hagar, he, he, um, yeah, that, that's Hagar, Hagar. Hagar thought she was on top of our foremother because she conceived a child and our foremother Sarah was barren at the time. She could not conceive. So she, what, she thought it was a good idea to disrespect our foremother. You understand? She forgot her place. He says, for an odious woman, when she's an odious woman, is a disrespectful sister. You understand? Odious woman. Let's just let me just get the, the let me just, just get the synonyms of odious. Let's say define odious. Mm. Odious. Adjective. Extremely unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Impulsive. You see that thing? It says an odious woman when she's married. And even when she's not married, they still have this character. So I'm jumping to the sisters now. Okay, I'm switching to the sisters. It says extremely unpleasant, repulsive. Let's read some, some synonyms. Okay, come on. Revolting. She's revolting. Go ahead. Repulsive. Mm. Repellent. Come on. Read. Repugnant. Repugnant. Read. Repugnant, disgusting. Disgusting. Go ahead. Offensive. Mm -hmm. Objectionable. Meaning what? She's always argumentative. She don't believe nothing. You say one, she says something else. You say this, she says that. That's this. This is an odious woman right here. Go ahead. Vile. Vile. She's what? She's what? Venom. She's poisonous. She'll kill you. Go ahead. Foul. Mm -hmm. Abhorrent. Read. Loathsome. Loathsome. She's hateful. Go ahead. Nauseating. Nauseating, meaning you like you just want to throw up when her name comes up. Go ahead. Nauseous. Nauseous. Read. Sickening. Sickening. Go ahead. Hateful. Hateful. Detestable. Detestable. Listen, all of this is what that's what the bible says go back listen i've never seen so synonyms about one person about one uh, about a, a, listen it says an odious woman is the one that did what it says it disquieted the earth this is some heavy stuff an odious woman disquieted the earth okay um let me see intolerable unacceptable despicable contemptible beyond the pale unspeakable, poisonous, nauseous, okay, obscene, base, hideous, grisly, gruesome, horrendous, heinous, atrocious, awful, terrible, dreadful, frightful, obnoxious, unsavory, meaning what? Yeah, she she's gives you a bitter taste in your mouth, unpalatable, unpleasant, disagreeable. She does not, well, she will argue down when it comes to this book. Nasty, distasteful, Dislikable, off-putting, displeasing, ghastly, horrible, horrid, gross, putrid, sick-making, yucky, god-awful, beastly, bogging, skanky, noisome, disgustful, scabby, loathy. Listen, <laughs> this is the Bible. Go back. Proverbs 30, verse 23. Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 23. Uh-huh. For an odious woman when she is married and an handmaid that is heir to her mistress. So now an odious woman. So when this woman's name comes up, these are all the things that everybody thinks about, both men and women. You don't want to be married to such a woman like this. So you brothers, you better make sure that you prove a sister. You understand? Because if you don't, the Lord will give you this right here because you will just ignore the counsel. You understand? The classes come out, you just ignore the whole thing because the little man downstairs is what, who's making decisions for you. Watch this. Give me Sarak. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 1. Go ahead. Of these things, be not thou ashamed. He says, be and not. Ask... Of these things, be not thou ashamed. Don't be ashamed of these things he's going to mention. Go ahead. 
and accept no person to sin thereby. So now let's jump down. The things that you must not be, he says, don't be ashamed of these things. Jump down to verse six. Verse six. Mm -hmm. Sure keeping is good. Sure keeping, even... hold on. Sure keeping. Sure keeping is good. Meaning what? He's going to explain what he means by that. Go ahead. When evil wife is and shut no, up. No, no, read, read. Okay, read that right. Read that right. Read verse six again. Remember, verse one says, Of these things be not thou ashamed. Watch this. Verse six now. Come on. Sure keeping is good. Where an evil wife is mm -hmm. and shut up where many hands are. So now the Lord is saying, don't be ashamed of such things. He says, don't be ashamed of showkeeping. Don't be ashamed to what? Of showkeeping where an evil wife is. Because an evil wife, she will embarrass you in the midst of the congregation. He says, showkeeping is good. He says, don't be ashamed of doing showkeeping to make sure because where an evil wife is, there's going to be problems and chaos. She will embarrass you. And, and shut up, meaning what? Make sure that you shut her up, okay? Keep her in the house where many hands are because there's many people there, you understand? In the kitchen, where may, I'm giving example of the sisters be cooking and all that. Yes, it's going into that also. Because if you hate leadership and you are in the cooking department, listen, I'll be very uncomfortable eating your food because that odious spirit is going to say, I'm going to poison the leadership. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's very important to bring this stuff out. That's why it says, show keeping is good where an evil wife is. And shut up where many hands are. Don't get her involved because guess what? She will poison the people. I don't like that nigga right there. He's always using the scriptures. He's always correcting me. He's always saying this to keep women in check. I'm going to poison that Negro right there. Real talk. You understand? So you need to listen. This stuff is very important. This stuff right here. Watch this. Give me. Give me Sarah 25. Give me Sarah 25 verse 17. Come on. Yes, chapter 25 verse 17. Go ahead. The wickedness of a woman changed her face. Hmm. And darkness her countenance like sackcloth. So the wickedness of a woman, you're going to see her through her face. She changes her face. She look at you, oh, that's that Negro right there. He's always be speaking against the woman because they don't want to be corrected. It says what? The wickedness of a woman changes her face. She'll be, she'll be changing her face to look like a man, like she's going to fight you. And darkness her countenance like sackcloth. Next verse, watch this. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors uh -huh. And when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. So now it says, here you are, you are a brother. You understand? You are, you are having a conversation with the brothers. We're going over scriptures and so forth. Your name, your wife's name comes up. It says what? It says, a husband shall sit among his neighbors. And when he heareth it, when he heareth what? The name of his wife, it says, he's going to sigh bitterly. Who says, oh, no, not this again. She did what? She's doing what? You see, you see what I'm saying? And this type of a sister, she what? She's going to destroy you in this truth. Why? Because here you are, you are building. You are building the house of Israel. You are doing works in the body. You are building yourself up. As you are doing that, she will pull everything down because she's a foolish woman. Like we read in Proverbs 14, verse 1. As you are building, she will destroy the house down. You are, that type of sin, you better stay away from that type of a demon because she will destroy you. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Mm -hmm. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Meaning what? Give me Ecclesiastes 7.26. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Come on. And I find more bitter than death the woman mm -hmm. whose heart is snares and nets. Meaning and her, her mind. hands. 
He says, whose heart is snares and net, he's going to trap you up. And because he knows how to make it clap, you understand? He knows how to make it clap. He has you. Now, you have, your head is buried in the coochie. You cannot get it out. You can't pull it out. No matter how many scriptures we bring out, you don't want to come out of that coochie. Now he says, her hands, her heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands, meaning why she's holding you captive. And the reason why she's holding you captive is because of this. Keep going. And her hands is bands. Mm. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her. If you please the Lord, you will escape from that type of woman. Okay? Not, these, not you righteous sisters up in here. Go ahead. But the sister shall, but the sinner shall be taken by her. You see, that's the key right there. But the sinner shall be taken by her. The sinner, though, will be taken by this woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands is bent. The sinner will be taken by this woman. You understand? Go back. Sirach 25, verse 19. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 19. Go ahead. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Mm -hmm. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. So it says all wickedness is little compared to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. You understand? It's but the sinner shall be taken by her. You're going to fall upon her. You're going to be taken by her. She will destroy you. Why? Because you also, you wicked as hell. You understand? But if you please the Lord, you will escape. He didn't say, but the sin, it says, but whoso pleaseth God shall leave her. Mm -mm. It says, whoso pleaseth God shall escape. So if you're escaping, <laughs> could you imagine somebody that is, you, you remember that move, that series, Prison Break? What were they doing? Escaping from prison. Yes, you must escape. That's why it says, whose hands as bands escape. That means run. You understand? Run. That's what the Lord is saying right here. Watch this. Because as men and women in this truth, I really wanted to go deeper into this class, but I just skipped a whole portion of things, things I want to deal with. I'm looking at the time. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book. I just want to deal with the sisters just for a second. So sisters, this is not the type of uh, characteristics of a sister you must be. This, this type of sister you must avoid these type of women. You must not be like these women that we just read about. The type of women you must follow, give me Judith. Okay, Judith 8 verse 28. Judith 8. Judith chapter 8 verse 28. Go ahead. Then said Ozias to her, mm -hmm. all that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. And there is none that may gainsay thy words. So Judith, our foremother, she had a reputation among the women. You understand? She had a good reputation. Watch this. Go ahead. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. He says, not the first day. What is that saying? Letting you know Judith had good works. She had a good name. That's why it says, if for this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested among all Israel. Read. But from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known thy understanding. You see that thing? All the people have known thy understanding. She had a good reputation in Israel. This is the type of spirit and character you need. You must pray for and apply yourself to this. Build yourself according to this. You don't know how? Seek counsel. We'll show you how. Read. Because the disposition of thine heart is good. Because the character of your mind is good. Jump down to verse 31. 31. Therefore now pray thou for us, because thou art a godly woman. Because thou art a godly woman. Not the Christian women today, they say, me, I'm a godly woman. I'm a God-fearing woman. They don't fear the Lord. They don't discipline their lives. You understand? They eating pork, lobster, shrimp, wearing pants, big blonde weaves, and so forth, saying, no, I'm a God-fearing woman. Mm -mm, they don't fear the Lord because they don't discipline their lives. According to the that said the Lord. Read. And the Lord will send us rain to fill our sustenance, and we shall faint no more. Meaning the Lord is going to bless us. You understand? 
Watch this. Give me Judith chapter 11, verse 21. Come on. Judith chapter 11, verse 21. Read. There is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other, both for beauty of face and wisdom of words. Mm -hmm. You see, was not only was she beautiful, but she was, she was what? She had wisdom. Our foremother Judith had wisdom. Now, watch this. Give me Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Because we're not going to be able to build this nation without the women. We're not going to build the nation without the sisters. The sisters must be with one in one accord with the men of Israel. One accord. Same spirit, same judgment. You understand? Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Watch this. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Go ahead. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication mm -hmm. with the women. You see that thing? With the women, with the women, with the women. We are not going to build a nation without the women. You understand? We all went into captivity together. We all kind of come out together. So it says, then these all continued with one accord. They were in one spirit, one mind, one judgment. Sarah 25 and 1 real quick. Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. The unity of brethren, the love mm. of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together because marriage is a foundation for what? Nation building. So now what we're reading here in Acts is, is that these all continued with one accord. They were in one mind. You understand? We beautify the Lord at this point. That's why three things beautify the Lord. The unity of brethren, we, we had the unity of brethren here in the book of Acts. The love of neighbors, we had all of that. And men and wife that agreed together because our forefathers and foremothers, they had families, they, they got married. So now it says what? They were in one accord. Go back to Acts 1 verse 14. Acts chapter 1 verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. You see that thing? So now they were with one in one accord because we must all what? We must all be in the same mind and the same judgment. Because the minute we start to, de we, we separate, we meaning we separate, we are not joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment, there's going to be divisions, which is what, that, what the Lord does not want. The Lord wants Israel to come together. He wants us to unite. That's what the most, the most high God wants Israel to come together as one, in the same spirit, in the same mindset. So that's what we all must have. Same spirit, same mindset. Give me the book of Ephesians 4, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You see what he's saying? Endeavoring, meaning what? You must fight to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. One spirit, one mind, one judgment. Go ahead. There is one body and one mm -hmm. spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One body is one body of Christ. One spirit is the spirit of Christ. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling to get the kingdom. Go ahead. One Lord, one mm -hmm. faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Same understanding. Read. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So now this is unity. Give me Jude verse 19. This is what's going to, this is what going, this is what messes things up. Because what we read in Acts 1, they were all in one accord, you understand, with, with the women. So the women was, was, was in one accord with the men. Because the men was what? Organizing the nations. Guess what? The women were supporting the men in building the nation. Okay, read. Jude, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. So the spirits like this, these are the spirits that will make, the, these are the type of spirits that will destroy things because they want to separate, they want to be by themselves, they want to do their own thing, they hate law and order, they hate, they hate rank, 
they hate structure, they hate command, they hate organization. Because you hate all of that, you cannot build with us and we can build with you. So these are things that um, I want you sisters to understand and I need you brothers to understand. Our forefathers, they set a good example. Our foremothers also, they set the right example. So guess what? You want a good name? You, that's why he says, you must read. You see the characteristics of our forefathers. You understand how they move, the decisions they made. Do you put yourself in this book? This is your family business. This is your photo album. So when you don't study, you don't read, you don't care about your history, you don't care about your fathers, you don't care about your mothers, your aunties, so on, and you don't care about none of them. You understand? I'm going to end the class right here. I wanted to go further, but mm, ish, Lord's will, I will continue this class. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. These do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.